Hey everybody, this is Adam Kokesh, the Freedom Guy, and I'm really excited about going down to D.C. tomorrow to protest Trump with the War is for Losers protest at the White House. And I encourage you to join me. We'll be there at noon with a bullhorn and some kind of soapbox. So we'll be live streaming as well. The link to the event description is below. But with this video, one of the things I want to do is make sure that this is something people know they can participate in from anywhere. And it's not really about protesting because we know that you know protest by itself, not connected to any larger change is kind of futile, right? Just an expression of angst. And I think it's important that people have that, uh, especially the Trump supporters who feel betrayed by Trump as to his foreign policy in general, being a non-interventionist or claiming to have been one so consistently. And then just turning on that, you know, very recently with the strike in Syria and the skirmish on the Iraq border and U.S. tanks now involved in this conflict. So obviously you see a pretty serious escalation here that's in contradiction with a lot of what Trump said on the campaign trail. So what we're doing with this really is building a culture of allegiance to the law in the military. Now I guess <laughs> maybe that was the most awkward way of explaining this, but what we're really talking about is military civil disobedience in a lawful way. That really isn't civil disobedience so much as just a call to conscience and legality. And for all the problems with the American legal system, it's not a justice system, it's a legal system, we do have some important mechanisms built in for people in the military for when they are asked to carry out unlawful orders. Like if you're asked to torture someone or kill an innocent person or something like that, you are legally supposed to disobey those orders. So in the bigger picture, similarly, you're supposed to disobey orders that are unconstitutional. And in this case, any initiation of a military action, any start of a war, any military action that's not an immediate uh, responsive thing, uh, it requires congressional approval. So Trump's orders for military action in Syria are illegal. This is what people were challenging uh, Obama on in a lot of ways. A lot of people wanted to impeach Obama for similar things with drone strikes. And of course, with President Bush, the war in Iraq and uh, the occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan, all of those in uh, you know, questionable legal circumstances. And I want to tell any military members who are watching this video that this is something I can tell you from my experience. I was in Fallujah in 2004. I ended up torturing people, uh, sleep deprivation torture. I was there in civil affairs. It wasn't my job, but uh, at, at very least, I knew that those orders were unlawful, and I had an opportunity to, re to refuse, and I didn't. And now it's something that I got to live with for the rest of my life. Whereas the people who refuse, and I especially want to point out this example for conservatives, uh, anti-globalists, uh, who, who are now very supportive of, uh, of this, uh, you know, Trump alleged Trump platform plank of non-intervention, that this is uh, like Michael New refusing to put on the UN blue helmet uh, under Clinton. And that was, a, that was a really big, important act of, of military disobedience. And the, the worst that happened to him was he got a bad conduct discharge. So, and, and he's still fighting this legally in some ways, or, or was for a long time afterwards. And I want people to know that, you know, if you refuse to push the button, even if you're the guy just being asked to, you know, push the button that sends the missile to, to kill people in Syria, that you can refuse that order. And, and I think it's a, it's a beautiful sacrifice to make if you have the opportunity to take that moral stand and say, no, I'm not going to do something unethical just because I'm being ordered to do it or I'm being paid to do it. I'm going to stand up for the law. I'm going to stand up for the Constitution. I'm going to stand up for what I know to be right in my heart, and you're going to be happier with that decision in the long run. So I want to say that it's been beautiful to see so many Trump supporters become former Donald Trump supporters after this. And I was very you know, encouraged to see, like I said, a lot of conservatives go non-interventionist. And I, I, I would have said, you know, like, you, know, you can't trust Donald Trump. And that's what I said. And, you know, I hate to say I told you so, but uh, here we are. And there's a way that, that, uh, that you can make this right. And I want to say first to, to Paul Joseph Watson, who I'm a fan of, you know, thank you so much for being able to come out and say, hey, I'm off the Trump train. And for Alex Jones, you know, I know he's going back and forth, but, man, hearing him on election night and on the Joe Rogan experience, well, um, 
You would think he was being paid to say some of those unusually nice things about the savior Trump, but uh, then you have someone like Stefan Molyneux, who you got to remember was also huge behind Trump during the, the election cycle and got millions upon millions of views doing pro-Trump videos. You know, and, and Stefan is someone I consider a personal friend, so, like, you know, this was not a far and away victory for Donald Trump. In fact, remember, he lost the popular vote. You know, you had a hand in this. And I want to say I appreciate your intellectual integrity and in the analysis of the Syrian strike being very careful to... Stefan, I think you basically destroyed the... Donald Trump is playing 4D chess, and if he just does this, then it's this and this. No, you, you destroyed all of those silly arguments, and I want to thank you for that. But I, I think there's still uh, a ways for you to go to get back to you know the philosophical integrity that so many people love you for. And for all of the Donald Trump supporters and former Donald Trump supporters who want to make this right, who say, like, look, we're still hopeful for Trump. I'm not, uh, especially after this. But I understand that, that there was a lot of really righteous sentiment uh, behind the election and the nomination of Donald Trump and a lot of people who were involved in that campaign for righteous reasons who are now very disappointed. And, and I hope you realize, uh, you know, where you went wrong intellectually and thinking that, you know, hey, if we just get a better puppet, or a better strongman or a better dictator, somehow that's going to make us more free, when really it's about changing the paradigm. And, and I, I invite you to participate in what I'm doing tomorrow. I invite you to participate in this conversation around Syria in a meaningful way now that really changes the culture and changes the conversation. And that is, if you know someone in the military, reach out to them and tell them that you encourage them disobeying unlawful orders. You encourage them to disobey uh, Donald Trump's orders when they are not in line with, at very least, the Constitution to which they swore an oath, if not to their higher moral principles of, you know, not hurting people and taking their stuff when they haven't done anything to you. And this war in Syria has largely been made possible by American covert intervention of funding different groups who are involved with this in order to get to the point where Donald Trump can spend a hundred million dollars worth of military hardware on an, you know, on an airstrike that has no, in no way justified by any kind of sense of, of self-defense for the American government or anything that you could call American interests. That's a hundred million dollars that could have been spent here at home making America great, creating jobs. I mean, what, what, what would you do with $100 million? So um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm so grateful that, that this has shown um, that I was right to be hopeful about the Donald Trump phenomenon, that a lot of his supporters are people who are genuinely open-minded and free thinkers. And I'm just calling on you now to take this to the next step intellectually, in you know, with your integrity, with your values, take it to the next step, step up in terms of participating in the conversation, helping change the culture. So I've got a link below. This video will be on YouTube and Facebook and anywhere else you want to repost it, please repost it. I want to make sure that this, this protest that we're doing tomorrow really is, is a broader call to action and, you know, not just, um, you know, one crazy lunatic standing in front of the White House with a bullhorn. And, um, really make this an opportunity and an invitation to everyone to participate in this and have something uh, to say about what's going on and, and to help make the, uh, the world a better place. So uh, Paul Joseph Watson, Alex Jones, Stefan Molyneux, all you other alt-writer conservatives who are genuinely anti-war, genuinely want to see a non-interventionist, more ethical foreign policy, please join this effort. Share this video, check the link below, and thank you so much for watching. Peace and love.